Hi everyone, welcome to Mimco's Academy. So today's video is for metal carbene complexes. So let's see what is metal carbenes. So metal carbenes are metal attached to carbon with double bond. M double bond CH2. This is a metal carbene. So what is a carbene? CH2 to uh, electrons. So this is a carbene. And these two electrons can be either in opposite direction or in same direction. So when it is in opposite direction, S is equal to 0 and here S is equal to 1. Spin should be 1 and here 0. So spin multiplicity 2S plus 1 is equal to what? 2 into 0 plus 1, 1. Here 2S plus 1 is equal to 2 into 1 plus 1, 3. So, spin multiplicity is 3, 4, triplet carbene. When spin multiplicity is 3, it is called triplet. When it is 1, it is singlet. So, this is singlet and this is triplet carbene. So, two types of carbenes are there, singlet and triplet. And we need these two into Fischer carbene and Schrock carbene. So, singlet carbene is Fischer carbene. And Schrock carbene is triplet carbene. Schrock. So let's move on to Fischer carbene first. So in Fischer carbene, the points are the it is a singlet carbene, singlet carbene. The electrons are like this. Spin multiplicity is one. And another important point is the metal in Fischer carbene should be. We are talking about Fischer carbon. Metal should be in low oxidation state. Low oxidation state. This is very important. Metal should be in low oxidation state and ligand should be ligand or pi acceptor ligand. Pi acceptor ligand like CO, CN minus, NO, etc. And one example for Fischer carbene is double bond CH2 carbene which is attached to a metal like chromium. Then ligand CO, pi acceptor ligand, 5 times. CO, 5 times ligand, pi acceptor ligand, chromium metal atom and double bond CH2 carbene, metal carbene complex. This is an example for Fischer carbene. And when coming to uh, when uh, talking about the electrophilic nucleophilic nature of metal and carbon, we get that carbon is electrophilic in nature and metal atom is nucleophilic in nature. I will explain why. When uh, we take metal orbital and carbon orbital, and two bonds are there, hydrogens or any substituents can be placed here. Let's say X and Y or hydrogen. So here what happened? One of the metal orbital and carbon orbital gets overlapped and form a bond. So here the uh, singlet carbene is represented like this opposite pair. So in uh, what is the normal bonding? The ligand will donate its electron to metal atom. So let's consider this as the ligand carbon. So carbon will Donate it electrons to metal atom. That's normal bonding. Normal. But in bad bonding, metal can donate electrons to ligand. So here also bad bonding uh, takes place. So metal will donate its electrons to carbon MTP orbital. So when metal D by electrons are uh, donated to carbon, it is called bad bonding. So when metal is donating electrons, what happens? Metal will get positive charge. Metal will get positive charge and carbon will get negative charge. So carbon will get negative charge if metal is donating electrons. But here in Fischer carbenes, the band bonding is not so strong. Normal bonding is strong, band bonding is not strong. So what happened? Carbon will donate its electrons to metal atom. So carbon will get positive charge. And metal will get negative charge. That's shown here. Chromium is getting negative charge due to uh, high normal bonding effect than bad bonding. 
So carbon will donate its electrons to metal atom. So carbon will get positive charge. It is electrophilic in nature. That's very important. In Fischer carbene, the carbene is the carbene is electrophilic in nature. Fischer carbene is electrophilic in nature. Metal atom is nucleophilic in nature. And pi accepted ligand should be there in Fischer carbene. So uh, and Fischer carbene is diamagnetic. Diamagnetic in character. Diamagnetic. So that's much uh, points about Fischer carbene. Now we can move on to Schrock carbene. So let's move on to Schrock carbene. So in Schrock carbene, uh, it is opposite of Fischer carbene. So what we said in uh, Fischer carbene, the metal should be in low oxidation state. So here metal should be in high oxidation state. High oxidation state. So metal uh, atom should be electron poor. Electron poor. So definitely metal will be electrophilic in nature and carbene will be nucleophilic in nature. Just reverse, uh, just opposite of Fischer carbon. So in short carbon, metal is in high oxidation state, electron poor. Metal is electrophilic in nature, carbon is nucleophilic in nature. And, and the magnetic character of Fischer carbon was diamagnetic. So here it will be paramagnetic. And the spin multiplicity is what? Uh, the electrons are like this. So, triplet 2s plus 1 is equal to 3. Triplet carbon. So, triplet carbon. And Schrock carbon is a triplet carbon. Fischer carbon is single carbon. Spin multiplicity is 1. Here, to, uh, spin multiplicity is 3. And paramagnetic character. Uh, metal is in high oxidation state. And ligands are not pi acceptor. In Fischer carbon ligands were pi accepted like CO etc. CO CN minus. In Schrock carbon ligands are not pi accepted ligands. And one example for Schrock carbon is R3. R can be alkyl group, not pi accepted. And titanium or metal atom double bond CH2. So which is electrophilic in nature? Titanium metal atom should be electrophilic in nature. And carbon should be carbon should be nucleophilic in nature. So just reverse of Fischer carbon. And there is a shortcut for uh, remembering these points. That is sen feslo feslo sen feslo. So S is for shock shock carbon. N is for Nucleophilic and T is for triplet. So we have seen Shaw carbene. Shaw carbene is triplet, uh, nucleophilic in nature, and uh, okay, that F is for Fischer and E is for electrophilic and S is for singlet. Fischer carbene is singlet carbene, electrophilic in nature. We are talking about the carbon atom. So carbon atom is electrophilic in Fischer and nucleophilic in shock. And LO, LO is for low oxidation state. Here high oxidation state. For shock carbon, high oxidation state. For Fischer, F, Fischer, F is for Fischer carbon, low oxidation state. So this is the shorter same Feslo. Shock, nucleophilic triplet, Fischer, electrophilic simplet, low oxidation state. Let's do one question. The question is uh, what? which of the following statement is correct? So four statements are given. Oxidation state of metal is low in fissure and high in shock. Auxiliary ligands are pi acceptor in fissure and non-pi acceptor in shock. Substituents of carbon, carbene carbon are non-pi donor in fissure and pi donor in shock. Carbene carbon is electrophilic in fissure and nucleophilic in shock. So, first statement oxidation state of metal is low in fissure and high in shock. So, just remember sen feslo. So, oxidation state of metal is low in fissure. 
so for f low so that's right and for shock just reverse high so this statement is correct auxiliary ligands are pi acceptor in fissure that's i already said uh, pi acceptor ligands are in fissure and non pi acceptor in shock so this is also right substituents of carbon are non pi donor in fissure and pi donor in shock uh, i didn't said about substituents of carbon carbon so the substituents in carbon carbon in fissure so double bond c uh, h2 so instead of h we can place o n e uh, n e like that and here what chromium then co5 times so this was the example for fischer carbon so carbon is electrophilic in nature and chromium is nucleophilic in nature and carbon is donating electrons to chromium from where the carbon get uh, electrons this o n e can donate electrons to carbon so o n e is a pi donor so this statement says that substituents on carbon are not pi donor in fissure this is the example for fissure so this statement is wrong substituents on carbon is uh, pi donor not non pi donor substituents of carbon 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 in fissure is pi donor now coming to fourth statement carbon carbon is electrophilic in fissure yes carbon carbon is electrophilic in uh, fissure and nucleophilic in shock so this is also right